Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom, and today we are facing danger at the age of seventy, and we all got a long way to go until we're seventy. And hopefully, when I turn seventy, I'll be just as chipper. As I am now, as a very young eighteen-year-old boy. <laughs> so yes, indeed, I've got a long time before I'm seventy. But、uh, yes, indeed, we have to hand it to Nancy here. We should so, probably say what chipper means, right? Ah,、uh, well, I guess、uh, chipper just means excited,、uh, young, Pleasant, and full、happy. of energy. Yeah, she's very chipper. Someone who's in a good mood is chipper. Yeah, that's what it、yeah. means. Now, remember, we're talking about this program called Fifty Ways to Kill Your Mammy. We're not killing somebody's mother here, but that just happens to be the title of this show. <laughs> In the show, we've got an Irish presenter, a TV presenter by the name of Baz Ashmawi. I hope I said that right. Ashma Maui. Ashmawi. Ash okay. Ash I don't、Maui. really know what、uh, the nationality of that. <laughs> so, he's a, he's Irish, but it doesn't sound like an Irish name yeah, at all. Yeah, could it be Celtic or something? I'm yeah, not I don't quite know. so sure. I don't know Come, Gaelic or whatever. I'd have to do some research on that. Gaelic would be appropriate for Ireland. I、yeah. guess it would be, unless he's an immigrant from someplace else. But we're just going to call him Boz here.、Yeah. And Boz's mother Nancy has accepted a number of challenges. She did some skydiving, and she also learned how to shoot a gun. Wow! In order to hunt down some fugitives in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> Which is really seriously dangerous. That's not just an adventure. That's really dangerous because those fugitives are hiding from the police and they're armed. If you show up, they'll shoot to stay out of prison. Believe me. Absolutely. So she does that. She learns how to shoot a taser, which is a special type of weapon. It's a gun, but it doesn't shoot bullets. It shoots these two like wires, right? And they they shoot into someone's body, and then they're kind of electrocuted. They have electricity in them. It's very painful, from what I understand. So she's just、uh, moving on to the next adventure. We're going to be talking about Morocco. They even end up in Miami, Florida,、Ooh. which is a, a fun place to go. They do some crazy things there. But I don't think she actually ends up dying. I think she survives her crazy adventures. You got to hand it to her; she's quite a brave lady. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of today's lesson right now. Next up, Boz and Nancy are in Marrakesh, Morocco. Nancy's unaware of what awaits her as she and Boz wind their way through Marrakesh's tiny alleyways. Knowing perfectly well how his mother feels about reptiles, Boz has arranged for Nancy to learn how to charm a snake. Indeed, Nancy's nose predictably reverberates as soon as she's presented with a black viper. Boz is intent on making her squirm, though, so he's quick to remind his mother that rules are rules. Nancy finally musters up the courage to wrap the venomous viper around her neck. Will that be enough to appease Boz, or will he make her charm it into submission? Back in the U.S., the adventures continue in Miami, Florida. Nancy wrestles alligators, rides roller coasters, and tries parasailing. But none of these is daring enough for Boz. He's in search of the ultimate thrill. He knows he's found it when he comes across a 1942 warplane. Nancy's challenge is to pilot the warplane through a complete loop-the-loop. Obviously, Boz wouldn't dare to send his mother into the air by herself. In fact, Boz isn't sure if she'll get into the warplane at all. However, Nancy eventually guides her warplane into the air, with some assistance from her wingman Tom. She even somewhat miraculously takes control of the gears. Nevertheless, Boz won't be content until Nancy's performed the agreed-upon loop. Will she be able to overcome her fright? Tune in to TLC's Fifty Ways to Kill Your Mammy this May. To find out if Nancy is able to accomplish these daunting tasks and many more. Okay, everybody, the time has come for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson in detail. We are facing danger. 
at the age of seventy. Now, remember last time we talked about different challenges. That Boz's mother Nancy has faced. Well, next up, the next challenge that she's going to face is in Marrakesh, Morocco. Morocco, of course, is a country in North Africa. I believe it's right across from Spain there,、mm. straight south of Spain there, and that's where they're going. They're going to Marrakesh. I understand that's a very popular tourist destination. Lots of things to see and do there in Morocco. And Nancy's unaware of what awaits her as she and Boz wind their way through Marrakesh's tiny alleyways. So she's unaware of what awaits her. Await here is just a fancy way of saying wait. What is waiting for her?、Mm. What's going to happen to her? She's unaware of what's going to happen to her while she and her son Boz wind their way through the alleys in Marrakesh. If you wind your way through something, that means you just try to get through a very an. Area that has a lot of small spaces.、Yeah. This could happen here,、uh, for example, if in the night market, right? That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs>、uh, you have to wind your way through the Sherlin Night Market,、yeah. for example, if you want to find something to buy, or if you want to just get out of there, or wind your way through different crowds, or wind your way through the streets of Wanhua in Taipei, for example.、Uh-huh. Well, yeah, they've got these tiny alleyways there with lots of shops and markets and stuff. So, yeah, they got to figure out how to get from point A. To point B through all these little alleys. They sure do. I bet it's pretty exciting there. There are some exotic things, not just animals and insects and reptiles, things like that, but food is very different there too. So knowing perfectly well how his mother feels about reptiles, Boz has done something really kind of sneaky to his mom. He arranged for his mom, Nancy. To learn how to charm a snake, ah! <sighs> if if I really hated snakes, this would be the last thing I'd want to do. And his mother really doesn't like snakes; she's afraid of them. A reptile, by the way, is just a class of animal that includes snakes and lizards and crocodiles and turtles and tortoises. All of these things; those are reptiles. So he's taking her over. To learn how to charm a snake, when you charm a snake, I think they play music and you get that snake to kind of dance around. Mm-hmm. That's right.、Uh, this is famous in India. You've got those guys playing a flute, and they are snake charmers. Yeah, da 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 da. Something like That's that. That's the music. And usually, of course, they're going to want you to pay money to them so they can charm that snake.、Uh, charm here as a verb just means you kind of uh, uh, give somebody delight and you make them relax because you've got certain kinds of、uh, skills.、Mm-hmm. Especially men try to charm the ladies by being gentlemen and buying them dinner and opening. Doors for them and stuff like that.、Uh, a real charming person there. So yes, indeed, she's going to learn how to charm a snake, which doesn't、be. mean the char- the snake's going to be really charming to her. Or she's going to charm the snake. It means they get the snake to dance and sort of move in a fun way and to behave itself and not attack her,、uh-huh. especially if it's a cobra or something、yeah. like that. So indeed, Nancy's nose predictably reverberate as soon as she's presented with a black viper. Remember. Remember, we've been talking about the word "no"、yeah. in our program the last couple of days. No, you're not supposed to do that. Boo, 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 bushing, bushing, bushing. No, 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 no,、right. no, no, no. And so this is what she's saying when she is presented with a black viper. There are different kinds of snakes. This one is a viper. A viper is usually a poisonous snake with hinged fangs. Okay, those big teeth kind of sticking out there. Yuck. This is a black viper, and she predictably. Start saying no. Predictably means that you could probably guess for sure that she was going to do this. You know,、uh-huh. some of your friends—they're pretty predictable. You know exactly what they're going to do in certain situations, what they're going to say, etc. Now, if you use the word reverberate, which you won't see very often, but it just means that you repeat something several times, or you hear a noise that almost sounds like an echo. There are places you can go where you can talk and you hear your voice come back at you. That's an echo, right? So it's like you know you could hear this no 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 in in her mind, or really out loud. She's probably saying no 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 as soon as she is presented with this black viper. If you're presented with something, it just means you're given that thing. 
or it's shown to you. And so, as soon as she sees it, of course, she starts going, "No, no, 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 no!" A black viper is a very scary-looking snake because of those fangs. The fangs are, of course, his teeth that you can see. Yeah, I don't like those either.、Yeah. Most people probably don't. And Boz is intent on making her squirm, though, so he's quick to remind his mother that rules are rules. Yes, rules are rules. You're supposed to obey them. There's no getting out of it. He is intent on making her squirm to be intent on some. Something means that this is what you want to do. You're not going to take no for an answer. You're going to insist that that person do like you want them to. Uh, the reason why I think this sentence is in there that rules are rules. He must have made his mom promise that she would try anything, and be、uh, daring enough to try any of the things he put in front of her. So rules are rules. She said she would do it, and now she has to keep her word. She finally musters up the courage to wrap that venomous viper around her neck. Ugh, no way. Wow. So if you muster up the courage to do something, this is a a set. Of words, a phrase of words that we just use to say you have to gather your courage together. So you try to get as much courage as you can to do something that's really frightening to you. To muster up the courage to maybe give a presentation in front of a crowd of one thousand people, or to muster up the courage to ask this beautiful girl out on a date. Sometimes we just have to, you know, gather the courage we have to do something. Venomous means poisonous. So this. Snake is obviously poisonous and can bite and kill people, and she puts this viper around her neck. Ooh, that sounds pretty scary, but I guess that's part of the challenge. And we're going to ask another question here: Will that be enough to appease Boz, or will he make her charm it into submission? Will it be enough for her to simply have that snake around her neck, or is he going to say, "Hmm, that's not enough. You still have to charm that snake. You have to charm it into submission. Submission is the state of being controlled by somebody else, and you have to do what they say." You have no choice. Submission. You shall submit to my authority. For example, a submit、mm -hmm. is the verb there, and also we have the verb to appease, which means to basically satisfy someone's demands. That's right. So we're going to find out if that's going to be enough to make Boz happy. Or is she gonna have to do any anything more, or anything even scarier? Right now, guys, we're gonna listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back. 大家好，欢迎收听 English Digest， 我是 Sunny。我们今天要继续昨天的课程，阅读 Unit Eleven TLC 单元的第二天文章。首先，课文的第一段介绍巴兹带着他妈妈南希到摩洛哥的马拉克时，在那里。南希将会面对让他大声尖叫的爬虫类动物，也就是 a black viper， 一条黑色蝰蛇。我们看到第一段的第二句 ：Nancy's unaware of what awaits her as she and Boss wind their way through Marrakesh's tiny alleyways。当南希和巴兹在马拉克时的小巷弄间蜿蜒而行时，他并不晓得即将发生什么事。我们看到本句的一个动词。Await, await， 在这里的意思是某件事即将降临到某人身上。它另外一个常用的意思就是等待。那这时候，它跟另外一个动词 wait, w a i t， 也是等待的意思。这两者有什么不同呢 ？Await 是及物动词，所以后面直接加上受格，不需要搭配介系词 for。然而 ，wait 是不及物动词。后面必须先接介系词 for， 再接受格，也就是 await 加名词会等于 wait for 加上名词。例如 ，after awaiting 或是 waiting for his friend for thirty minutes， John grew impatient。John 在等了朋友三十分钟后，开始变得不耐烦。接着，我们再看到本句的另外一个动词 wind。它的过去式和过去分词都是 wound, w o u n d. Wind 在这里是蜿蜒前进的意思。Wind one's way through something 就是指在什么之间蜿蜒而行。例如 
The parade wound its way through the city streets. 这支游行队伍在城市街道间蜿蜒而行。Wind 当动词的时候，也还有一个缠绕的意思。例如 ，The snake wound itself around the tree. 这条蛇将自己缠绕在这棵树上。和 wind 相关的两个常见片语有 wind up， 意思是以什么收场或结束，相当于 end up。例如 ，The businessman wound up losing all his money。On that risky investment, 这名商人最后在那次高风险的投资中失去了所有的钱。另一个常见的片语是 wind back， 意思是倒转。例如 ，I press the rewind button to wind the video tape back to the start. 我按下倒转钮来将这卷录影带倒转到一开始的地方。我们接着看到第一段的倒数第二句。Nancy finally musters up the courage to wrap the venomous viper around her neck. Nancy 终于鼓起勇气，将那条有毒的蝰蛇缠绕在她的脖子上。动词 muster 有集结、聚集的意思。Muster up the courage to do something 就是指鼓起勇气去做某事。这个片语的 muster up 也可以替换成 summon up, s u m m o n。或是 pluck up, p l u c k. 例如 after dating Jesse for five years, Joe finally mustered up the courage to propose to her. 在和杰西交往五年后，乔总算鼓起勇气向她求婚。Stay tuned. We're taking a quick break. We shall now continue with our lesson. We've been talking about all these different challenges that Boz's mother Nancy has accepted, and indeed she has done all sorts of things. Where we left off, she was actually playing with a poisonous black snake,、mm-hmm. and、uh, Boz, I guess,、uh, was satisfied where we left off. So this happened in Morocco. So they're done with Morocco. They've had their fun there. And she has accepted the challenge. Maybe she's not so afraid of snakes anymore. Yeah. And now they are back in the U.S. in the U.S.A. And the adventures continue in Miami, Florida, which of course is the largest city in the state of Florida. There, Nancy wrestles alligators. She rides roller coasters, and she tries parasailing. But none of these is daring enough for Boz. Wow, that sounds like it's、uh, pretty daring to me, especially wrestling alligators. Yeah, an alligator is like a crocodile. They are types of reptiles, and to wrestle means you actually kind of grab someone and you try to put them on their back or make them give up or something like that. Uh huh. There are different kinds of wrestling, and also she rides roller coasters. You mentioned that before. That's a big ride at an amusement park.、They、roller coaster.、Me. Yeah. Yeah, they're okay. <laughs> and、uh, parasailing, which、yeah. means you're basically being pulled by a boat, and you have a parachute, so it actually pulls you up into the air while you're holding onto a rope, which is attached to a boat. And if you let go, I guess you'll just kind of float down into the water. Yeah, well, but none of these are really daring enough for Boz. He wants to do something a little bit、uh, more adventurous, I guess you could say. He's in search of the ultimate thrill. So, if you're looking for something that's daring or more daring, you're actually looking for something that's pretty risky. And that could possibly put you in danger, or put you in risk of hurting yourself, or maybe going to the hospital. We use this word "ultimate," guys, when we're talking about something that is the best, or maybe the most extreme example of something. The ultimate thrill would be the craziest thrill you could possibly find. So, the ultimate vacation would be the vacation of your dreams. You couldn't think of a better vacation. So ultimate is often used to talk about the most extreme or best of its kind, but we also use it to talk about something being at the end of some process. Like my ultimate goal is to become a famous singer. 
So that's a process. You're not going to be a famous singer overnight, but after a long process, that's that's what you would be. The ultimate goal. But here, it's actually the best or the most extreme of its kind. The top thrill here, the most exciting thrill there could be, and he knows he's found it when he comes across a 1942 war plane. Back in World War II, of course, they were fighting in the sky with these、uh, airplanes that had propellers,、uh-huh. right? The、uh, Messerschmitt、uh, had. The The Germans had that, and the Spitfire. The British had that. There are different kinds of warplanes.、Uh-huh. Nancy's challenge is to pilot the warplane through a complete loop. The loop. Wow, that's challenging. There, of course, we've probably all seen this on TV. When someone is flying an airplane, they are piloting the airplane. Of course, the person who flies an airplane is called a pilot. But pilot can also be a verb that means to fly an airplane, to pilot an airplane,、mm-hmm. and she has to do. A loop the loop, which is、uh, most commonly referred to as loop de loop. We just say loop de loop,、uh, like a D sound in between there. Yeah, and it's D E, so it's loop, and then the middle word would be D E, but we actually say D loop de loop. Loop de loop. Yeah, yeah, both both Tom and I were talking about that. It's actually used. Probably more often than loop the loop, but loop the loop is found in the dictionary. That's what's in the dictionary, so that's the one we're going to talk about. But、uh, yes, we most often say loop de loop. So she's going、yeah. to do a loop de loop. That means the plane starts flying upward, then it flies upside down, and then it comes back down on the other side, like a big circle in the sky. And you hope you have your seatbelt in or on, otherwise you would actually fall out of the plane going upside down. It would be dangerous,、yeah. and obviously Boz wouldn't dare to send his. Mother into the air by herself. Yes, he wants his mother to do daring things, of course, but he doesn't really want to kill her. He wants her to be safe. So, of course, he would not dare to send his mother into the air by herself. In fact, Boz isn't sure if she'll get into the warplane at all. He's、uh, not really sure if she's going to be brave enough to even be a passenger well, in、yeah. this warplane. We don't know exactly what model of warplane it is. It doesn't really matter because they're small. At least compared to the size of other airplanes, and they're very loud. And I've never been in one myself, but I could imagine if I were in one, it would be very scary. <laughs> yeah, you're out in the open air. You're not in some cockpit. You know, your face is right there out in the air. Nothing's protecting you. It's a little scary. So, Nancy. Uh, you know, she surprisingly does get inside of the plane, and it says she eventually guides her warplane into the air with some assistance from her wingman. A wingman is someone who's sitting to the side of you and is helping you. Uh, either drive somewhere because we actually call a wingman somebody who's sitting in the passenger seat in your car.、Um, but here, of course, her wingman in these old planes is sitting behind her, typically, or maybe even in front of her. I can't remember.、Um, and if you're giving someone some assistance, that's just another word for help. She even. Somewhat miraculously, or a little bit of a miracle, takes control of the gears. I'll let Tom explain gears, but something that happens miraculously feels like it's a miracle. Like you can't believe it happened. Miraculously, of course, is the adverb form of the noun miracle. Indeed, miraculously, it started to snow in the middle of summer, for example. And again, she takes control of the gears.、Uh, gears here could be referring to the actual equipment, but gears mostly refer to different speeds on a vehicle. If you're riding a bicycle, for example, they have many gears. Those are just like those、uh, metal rings that have teeth on them, and you put your chain on different gears,、yeah. and you can control the bicycle that way. Cars have different gears; they can be. Automatic and stuff, and nevertheless, even so, Boz won't be content. He won't be satisfied until Nancy's performed the agreed upon loop. Agreed upon—that's what they agreed that she would do. So she's got to accept the challenge. Content, as I just said, means you're satisfied. You're not uptight about anything. Right. Will she be able to overcome her fright? If you overcome something, you get over it. You're able to work past it, and also. We should look at this word content. This is not content, guys. This is content. It's an adjective, and it means you're satisfied. So, will he be satisfied, or he won't be satisfied until she actually performs this loop? Agreed upon, too, guys, is 
when you take two words and put a hyphen in the middle, it turns into an adjective that is describing what kind of loop it is. It's a loop they agreed upon, and to overcome, I've been able to overcome my dislike of. Of snakes? Do,、uh, no, I was a cho dofu. Cho dofu.、Uh, what's it called in English? Stinky tofu. Stinky tofu. Right. To、yeah. overcome your fear of、uh, cho dofu. You, <laughs> you get over something, and you can you can go on and do whatever it is you need to. Do. I still dislike cho dofu. It smells like vomit to me. But in any case, here will she be able to overcome her fear and complete that loop de loop? Well, you're going to have to tune into TLC's Fifty Ways to Kill Your Mammy this May, which is this month right now,、yeah. to find out if Nancy is able to accomplish. These daunting tasks and many more. If you accomplish something, you achieve or complete the thing that you're supposed to achieve or complete. To accomplish something in life,、uh, there's lots of accomplishments that you'd like to do.、Uh, you know, raise a family, get a good job,、mm-hmm. own a house. Those are different kinds of accomplishments. And daunting here just means it seems like it's very difficult. It's very challenging. Especially before you've tried it, so you're you're thinking about it, and wow, that seems kind of daunting. It could be better once you start and try. Who knows? Right now, guys, we're going to listen one more time to our Chinese teacher. 我们接着看文章的第二段。在第二段中，作者提到巴兹还带着妈妈尝试各种刺激的冒险，例如让南希和鳄鱼搏斗，还有让南希尝试滑翻伞等等。但这些冒险都还是不能满足巴兹。最后，他找到能令他满意的冒险，那就是让南希去开战斗机，并进行一次完整的垂直翻转。我们看到这一段的第六句 ：Obviously, Boss wouldn't dare to send his mother into the air by herself. 显然的，巴兹不敢让他妈妈独自飞行。Dare 在这里是当做一般动词，后面接不定词 to 加原 v， 表示敢去做某件事情。例如。When my father gets angry, I don't dare to look in his eyes. 当我爸爸生气时，我不敢直视他的眼睛。另外 ，dare 也可以当做助动词，后面直接接原形动词，通常用在否定句或疑问句。而且，不管第几人称，一律都用 dare， 不会在 dare 后面再加上一个 s。例如 ，John dare not doze off in the strict teacher's class. 约翰不敢在这名严格老师的课堂上打瞌睡。我们接着看最后一段的倒数第四句。She even somewhat miraculously takes control of the gears. 她甚至有点奇迹般的控制了操控装置。这里的 somewhat 是副词，意思是有点、稍微。例如 ，Amy finally agreed somewhat reluctantly to ask for directions. 艾米虽然有点不情愿，最后还是答应去问路。另外还有一个副词和 somewhat 很像，意思却不一样，那就是 somehow。somehow 的意思是以某种未知的方法，不知怎么的。例如 ，Brian is extremely busy， but somehow he always manages to finish his work on time。布莱恩极度忙碌，但不知怎么的，他总是能准时完成他的工作。以上就是今天的课程，谢谢大家收听。That is it for today. Thank you for joining us, and hopefully you'll check out this TV show on TLC. Enjoy it, and hopefully your English listening comprehension ability will improve by leaps and bounds. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Bye. Bye.